gentleman who coached the 1979 NCAA champion Michigan State Spartans. He put 19 years at Michigan State in. He had nine NCAA tournament appearances. He coached one of my favorite NBA players of all time, Magic Johnson. On the phone, we have Judd Heathcote. How are you doing, Judd? Hey, I'm doing well, guys. Good to hear. Do your juices get flowing when the NCAA tournament comes around? Well, you know, I sure watch all the games because I have, you know, interest in a number of teams when you think of number one, Michigan State, number to Gonzaga, then I, uh, you know, look to see what the University of Washington does and uh, the other Big Ten teams. So, yeah, I have great interest in the NCAA. Who's your pick to win it this year? I picked uh, Ohio State. You and Coach Henson both agree on that. Great minds think alike. Well, I think we've got that Big Ten background, so we lean toward the Big Ten. You're not going with the Spartans? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I picked them in an upset in the first two games, and I figure that's as far as loyalty could take me. What's the problem with Michigan State this year? Well, the, the players that they expected to play really well have not met expectations. They've got three centers that they rotate, none of which have really played very well. And uh, then Summers has had a a very bad senior year, and uh, the only two consistent players are Lucas and uh, uh, Green, and they're just not enough to carry the team game after game. Tom Mizzo worked for you for about five years as assistant coach, and then when you retired, took over. Did you ever imagine that he would become as successful as he was or is? Well, your, your uh, numbers aren't quite right. Tom was my assistant coach for 12 years. And I worked hard to get him the job, and people ask me the same question you did. Did I think he would be that good a coach? And I tell everyone facetiously that, no, I thought he'd be awful, and that would make me look good. <laughs> but, but actually, Tom got better every single year in all of the things you have to do as a head coach, whether it's media, whether it's recruiting, whether it's X and O's. And I just knew... In fact, you know, he struggled the first two years, and then uh, next year he was Coach of the Year, and I got to present him with that award at the Final Four, and I felt like putting a big sign on my chest, I told you so. But he's done an outstanding job, and, uh, you know, one of the elite coaches in the country. Now, he's come under some criticism for having too difficult a non-conference schedule for getting his team beat up during the season, and he does that in preparation for the tournament. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, you know, I talked to him just the uh, day before yesterday, and he said, you know, I think maybe I bit off a little more than I could chew with this year's uh, schedule. And, you know, when you play uh, in the Maui tournament, come right back and have to play Duke and Syracuse, and then you play Texas, uh, you know, he indicated maybe one or two of those games should have been with a lesser opponent. So, you know, I don't know. But Tom likes to play some tough teams early to get a measure of how good he is and what they have to work on to get better. And uh, if you just play the cream puffs, why, you never get that information. you got to give him credit, though, and you credit, too. You never heard about problems with Michigan State with – violations are you guys thinking about switching schools whereas the patinos and all these other guys go from school to school well you know uh i'm proud of the continuity that we've had at michigan state i was there 19 years tom's there 16 you know that's 35 years with just two coaches and i think tom's going to coach a number of you know he says he's not going to coach as long as i did you know i retired at 68 but he says he's probably good for about another five years. And a lot of those guys that say they're going to be good for another five years end up coaching ten years. Now, when you won early on at Michigan State with uh, Magic Johnson and Kelser and, and all those guys, did you think, hey, this is pretty easy. I'll, I'll have uh, two or three or four of these by the time my career is over. You know, guys, I actually thought that I would get back to the Final Four as you say, two or three more times during my career, and we never made it. You know, we got what I say kind of cheated out of two opportunities when the 
clock stopped at Kansas, and when the shot that Anderson shot at Georgia Tech, where they went to great pains to figure out whether it was a two or a three, actually it was after the buzzer, and we lost both of those games in overtime, and had we won them, well, who knows how far those te- those were two pretty good teams, how far they would have gone. Are there any teams that you root against in these tournaments because you don't like the schools? Gosh, you know that's a <laughs> or the that's a or good the coaches. Question. Usually, when I when I watch a Big Ten game, you know, I've got a favorite that I watch. I I uh, and so on, but you know, I I don't think I ever root against anybody. I just uh, I'm not made that way. I just root for teams. Will a Northwestern ever make it to the NCAA tournament? Well, you know, they came close this year, and uh, if uh, Koval had decided to come back and play, they might have had a great team, but he decided to give up his last year of basketball. So, you know, they they seem to come close. They seem to have uh, better players, but they can't get over the hump. A lot of people complain about Carmody running that offense, saying that a lot of athletes don't want to play in that offense. Well, you know, I, I'm not a Princeton offense advocate. You know, I think it's too much passing and, uh, uh, you know, not enough shot opportunities for maybe your better players. But uh, they've kind of uh, adjusted that offense. They're not running it quite the same as they did a couple of years ago. So they're taking more outside shots now, and they're getting more drives to the basket, which seems to be the – the trend in all of college basketball now. How important in the tournament is the coaching as opposed to the players just going out there and playing? Well, I think the coaching becomes more important at tournament time. You know, you, the old adage that the players win during the year and the coaches win during the tournaments. And I've always said one of the reasons that Tom has done so well in the tournament is they maybe out prepare a lot of teams. You know, they get every uh, video that the team has played, and they study that, and they have a game plan to try to take away some of the things that the club can do and maybe take advantage of some of their defensive uh, tendencies. And I think coaching is very important at tournament time. You played against, or you coached against the Fab Five teams in the early 90s, and now there's that uh, Jalen Rose movie out talking about it, which is creating a lot of controversy here when he basically said that Duke did not want the Fab Five type of players. They wanted kids from basically stable two-parent homes. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, I think uh, Duke recruits a certain type of player, and and maybe some of the Fab Five didn't fit into that kind of, uh, uh, I guess, framework, but, uh, you know, I think that uh, that's kind of a strong statement to make. Yeah, no, Rose called uh, the Grand Hills of the world, you know, Uncle Tom's for for going to a Duke, and Grand Hill responded, you know, rather harshly against that, and I don't blame him for it. Well, I don't either. I, as I said, I think that's a strong statement to make and maybe not a true statement. What was it like going against that Fab Five? I mean, when I watched them play basketball, it seemed like there was no teamwork. It was kind of like street ball out there. Throw the ball and just let them use their athletic ability to try to win the game. Well, uh, you know, I think that's a pretty good description, but the, there was so much talent there that they could get away with playing that way. Do you ever have teams like that that you could just roll out the ball and say, hey, I can just sit back and relax? No, and uh, I'm glad I never did because I wasn't that kind of coach. <laughs> I mean, how would you have coached the Fab Five if you were there? Well, I don't know. I think I would have had more structure than uh, than they actually had and probably have gone inside more than they did to uh, uh, Chris Weber and Juwan Howard. And uh, yet, uh, you know, you can't argue with success. And in the game of basketball, there's so many ways to play and so many ways to win that, uh, you know, you can't just say, hey, if I coach those guys, I'd coach them different. You know, you take John Wooden. He ran about three plays just over and over and over. 
and yet they ran them so well and they had so many good players that they could do that. A lot of other clubs could not. Look at North Carolina in 83-84. They had Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins, they had James Worthy, but again, Dean Smith kept those guys playing within a system and a structure, and they won. And basically, Michael Jordan could have taken over those games in college. Well, that's what I said, uh, you know, and even Dean Smith said, I'm the only coach that could hold Michael jo- Jordan down to 15 points a game or something like that. So, yeah, he never turned uh, Michael loose. And uh, so, you know, Michael was never quite the college player he could have been. But you were able to to turn Magic Johnson loose to a great extent. Well, you know, the, the, the Magic was one of those rare players that uh, when he had the ball, things happened. And so we were smart enough to put the ball in his hands all the time. That championship game, Magic versus Bird, a lot of people said that made the NCAA tournament what it is today. Other people say it was the late 60s game with the Elvin Hayes and the Astrodome. Do you think, which game do you think was more important to college basketball? Well, I'm a little prejudiced, but I think our game with uh, Indiana State propelled the NCAA tournament to, uh, you know, new heights. And, uh, you know, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And uh, I'm not sure that we're the reason it's where it is today, but we're the reason it started getting more attention, more fan interest, more TV money, more TV games. So, you know, we, we take credit for some of that. Thank you very much for your time, Coach. It was a pleasure talking to you for your insight. And you know what? If you want to come back to coaching, there's some jobs open here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice visiting with you. Likewise. Bye. That was a legendary Judd Heathcote.